this. Let's take a look at our, our carburetor again here and show you what, what's going on. Again, we have our float bowl here. And this is designed, the float in here, like the float in the back of your toilet, is designed to keep a certain amount of gasoline sitting here in, in the float bowl. Right? Raising or lowering this float is not a good idea because the whole goal is to, is to have this gasoline sitting right, right below the, the level of the top of the jet. The gasoline is able to come into the carburetor here and again we can have our jet drop to start us on a cold morning when we've got to add a lot more gasoline to the air. Here we have our tapered needle on the bottom here and you can see remember those air holes I talked about on the back side of the carburetor here they are here and those are in the at the rear of the direction of airflow so when we put this this into here those those breather holes are at the back side and those are the ones that take the vacuum and bring the vacuum up on top of the piston here allowing atmospheric pressure which comes through this hole here, in through here, and up into here, and that gets on the bottom of the piston. So that, that um, let me see if I can get this back in here correctly. The vacuum up, up in here allows atmospheric pressure, which is available through here, to push this piston up depending on the airflow. On the back side, we have our throttle disc which we can position all the way closed or all the way open. Here's the overrun valve which is uh, 1968 through 1980. Uh, this is designed to pull open on uh, times of extreme manifold depression which is deceleration to slow deceleration because the government doesn't want you to accelerate quickly nor, nor decelerate quickly. Is those, those are the times when you spill most of the unburned hydrocarbons, unburned gasoline into the air. Here in the top our damper, if you take yours and you take a look at this valve, you can see how this valve works and how when the piston wants to come up, the valve closes, but when the valve, when the uh, piston wants to fall down, the valve opens. And this is the miniature shock absorber inside here to afford this extra, extra uh, burst of gasoline on acceleration. So this is the SU. It works pretty well. Remember that they're, that they're sized uh, based on an inch and eighths of an inch over an inch. This is an H2 carburetor, HS2, which means that this is two eighths of an inch over an inch, or inch and a quarter. An MGB takes an, an HS6, excuse me, HS4, which is four eighths of an inch over an inch, or an inch and a half. Now the Volvo B18s, MGCs take HS6s, which are six eighths of an inch over an inch, or one and three quarter inch carburetors. Now the one and three quarter inch have been renamed the HIF, uh, the later model, the H horizontal integral floats. Uh, carburetors have been renamed the HIF 44s because everything in, in uh, Europe is now metric. Anyway, that's it. That's the carburetor. I hope this is a real quick explanation. I hope this makes it a little clearer for you on, on how it works, when it works. And uh, we'll tune in uh, next time to show you how to center the jet on an H-type carburetor. So thanks very much. Again, I don't want to sound like Starvin' Marvin, but bring your, bring your business around. We can always use uh, more business. we got a TC in today from Lowell, Indiana, and a TD in from Ada, Michigan. Um, but if you bring your car, it'll help us a lot. Thanks a lot.